welcome to my new video, everything you need to know before traveling to Namibia. For those that have already um, subscribed to my channel, you should know I love making comprehensive guides um, on yeah, countries um, to travel to. Um, because I'm also like planning my new trip to uh, the Balkans right now and I love just to have like a like you know like a guide that tells you within 10-15 minutes they tell you everything you need to know where to travel to like uh, where to stay um, what is the currency what is the what is the language they speak and all this kind of stuff and um, since I've traveled to Namibia twice, I love the country. Since uh, as a German, you have to go to Namibia, I guess. Um, why I explain to you later in the video. Um, but uh, I traveled to the country twice, and um, now I want to share my knowledge with you. If you like my video, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please give the video a thumbs up. And also, I would really um, appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. And otherwise, um, if you have some other questions, uh, just drop me a comment below and I will uh, love to answer that. So um, yeah, then let's get started. So number one, how to get to Namibia. There's three options. Um, there is um, an option to go by bus, by plane and by rental car. When I first went to Namibia, I took the bus from Cape Town to Namibia, which was a super long drive, like 24 hours, but it was worth it. Um, I booked with a nice company, um, like you find the name of the company in my blog post. And um, this company goes from almost every country in um, like Southern Africa. And uh, they have sleep liners, which are super comfortable. So, um, I almost felt like lying in my own bed sort of thing and um, I really enjoyed the ride. Um, if you go by plane, which I did the second time, um, just also check in my blog post for a recommendation with um, a flight engine, like search engine that I usually um, like check my flights with, like to find the best deals. And if you are planning to go by rental car, so um, just make sure like if you are planning on like, you know, do Southern, uh, Southern uh, Africa and you want to make Namibia a stop of your journey, um, just make sure with the car rental company that you can cross borders because you can't do that with every company that I definitely know. And um, also um, they might charge you an extra fee if you might be able to do so. So number two, how to travel in Namibia. Um, there's that first option, traveling by rental car. Um, so if you plan on traveling by rental car, which is a quite expensive um, option to be honest, but also the best option um, in order to go wherever you wanna go and um, yeah, to travel at your own pace. Um, just a few advices if you travel like if you if you're planning on getting a rental car since most of the roads are gravel roads and um, there's just a few tall roads in Namibia get a 4x4 and if you're planning on camping and you don't want to stay like in a or like you you don't want to pay that much for accommodation get um, a 4x4 with a tent on the roof um, also a few driving um, advices like in Namibia they drive on the left side of the road um, make sure that you drive during daytime because um, game might cross your way also plan your trip like your trips carefully because distances are super long and uh, you don't want to like be driving in like the nighttime and also um, if you go to remote areas stock up some fuel groceries and water so if you want to travel in namibia by public transport i have to be honest with you like the power like the choice of public transport is not that great in namibia um, so if you want to go by bus there is a few um, local companies um, running between like swakopmund and Windhoek. Um, i took the bus um, that like uh, I took the bus from Windhoek to Swakopmund, which was like 415 Namibian dollars. Um, of course, there is also uh, the minibuses going, like um, almost going everywhere. If you if you you know like have lots of time and you don't mind like sitting in a squeezed car and stuff, 
um, is definitely a cool way of getting to know the locals. Um, I also definitely recommend that, but you need time. Um, also, what you can do in Namibia is like um, do hitchhiking, but also please make sure that you don't travel like during the night, um, travel during daytime, because um, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a good way. Yeah, then and of course, like your third option would be just book a safari and go with like a travel agency um, to all the places of interest. Um, you can also find um, a recommendation about that in my blog post. So number three, the weather in Namibia slash um, best time to travel in Namibia. Um, the dry season slash winter time is uh, from May to October, which means temperatures are less, mosquitoes are rare, and like um, it's the best time to go for game uh, for for game viewing. Um, but you also need to know that time is super touristy, um, especially if you want to go to Etosha National Park. Um, most places are booked uh, through um, the the big like uh, travel agency so you must plan your trip in advance and if you're not flexible with the dates you might have a problem um, what is also really important to know is that it is really really it, it can be really warm during the day but it can also be like super cold during the night so take that um, into consideration when you pack your stuff take warm clothes but also take like some you know summer clothes and also, if you're planning on camping, take a really good sleeping bag, please. Okay, rainy season, summertime in Namibia is usually from October to May. Of course, temperatures are high. It is really humid. Streets can be flooded because there's going to be many rain. Um, then also, um, there might be a lot of mosquitoes. But also, I really enjoy traveling at this uh, time because I've never seen Africa that green. Of course, it's difficult, more difficult to spot animals, but it looks so amazing. And then also, um, although we have booked camping, we got offered like rooms because the rain was so heavy. So we got a free upgrade. And also what is really nice, um, like I needed that um, time when I went to um, Namibia, um, I needed to chill a bit so that it's less touristy so it's perfect to just you know to just chill a bit and like relax. So number four best places to visit in Namibia. There is a lot and I'm also just gonna mention them here right now because um, if you want more information just check um, underneath the video, there you find the link to my blog post and there you can read um, up on all the attractions. So of, of course, what you definitely have to see is like Fish River Canyon, Volvis Bay, Suakopmund, Susufle, I loved it. Um, you have to see um, uh, the capital Windhoek, um, Caprivi Strip is also really cool. Of course, Etosha National Park, and um, the ghost towns. I definitely also recommend that. So if you want to read more about that, just check in the link uh, below. Oh, and I forgot uh, a, a few like Solitaire, the Tropic of Capricorn and Skeleton Coast is also really cool to see. So number five, Namibia people and Namibia history. Um, Namibia only has like 2.5 million um, people. And uh, you can divide uh, the people into 11 ethnic groups, which is, for instance, the Owambo people, it is um, the Sun people, the Caprivian, and the Himba people. Since um, Namibia was um, also colonized by the Germans and ruled by South Africa, you do find like white people and, of course, like colored people there as well. What is also really important to know is that um, since Namibia was ruled by South Africa, the like, apartheid also existed in Namibia, unfortunately. So number six, Namibia language. Um, English is the official language in Namibia, but only spoken by a few people as their native language. Um, indigenous languages are the, for example, Oshiwambo and the Khoikhoi language. They are spoken by the majority of the people. 
since what I just said, um, uh, Namibia was also colonized by the Germans and ruled by South Africa, of course, you also find like German and um, Afrikaans as um, like spoken by many people. So number seven, Namibia currency, money and ATMs. Um, Namibia has like the Namibian dollar, um, which is valued one to one to the South African rand. What means that in Namibia, you can pay with both. You can pay with the South African rand and you can pay with the Namibian dollar, but it doesn't work the other way around. So in South Africa, you can't pay with the Namibian dollar. Um, also, sort out your money in bigger towns like Valvespace, Schwakopmund or um, Windhoek because it might be super difficult to find an ATM in remote areas, even though if you find one, doesn't mean that there's connection or that the card machine's working. So my biggest advice, always carry some cash with you and also like smaller amounts, like smaller notes, please. Number eight, national parks and wildlife in Namibia. Wildlife is almost everywhere in Namibia. When we were camping in Susufle, um, I had to go to the bathroom during the night and I was joined by an oryx. Oryx, yes, the name is a bit difficult. Anywho, um, so um, of course um, there is the famous Etosha National Park, which is yeah, the, one of the best places to see wildlife in Namibia. What I already mentioned, it is really difficult if you go in high season um, that you must book your accommodation in advance. Otherwise, most of the rooms and um, most of the accommodation is blocked by the big travel agency. It might be really difficult to, for you to find a spot. So plan your trip um, in advance. And also um, another good, really good place to see wildlife is, um, which most people don't even think of, the Cap Brevi Strip, which is like up north and um, yeah, it's also, it is becoming more and more popular now. So number nine, the plugs in Namibia, um, the power sockets, you find um, the type D and M in Namibia. So number 10, tipping. Uh, tipping in Namibia is definitely um, yeah, recommended at least 10% because the salary of people working in bars and restaurants uh, restaurants is quite low. What is also normal practice in Namibia is giving some change to the car parking guards that will look after your car while you go shopping or stuff like this. Don't be rude. It's the same in South Africa as normal practice. So number 11, medical advice. Um, like I already mentioned, um, distances are huge and it will take you a while um, to get to a doctor or um, to a pharmacy if you're not in the bigger towns like Windhoek and Swakopmund. Um, so be sure that you always have like, you know, um, all your medicines with you and like also an uh, emergency kit for in case of emergency. Number 12, vaccinations. Malaria. There is um, a low risk of malaria when you go up the north, like especially uh, Etosha National Park and especially like in rainy season. Um, yellow fever. You need to have a yellow fever certificate when you're entering the country from um, a country um, with a risk of yellow fever transmission. For any other medical advice, please consult your doctor back home. Number 13, best places to stay in Namibia. Um, I put together a list of places where I stayed and also recommended by friends, which you're gonna find in my blog post. Find the link underneath the video. Number 14, Namibia visa. There is a few countries that can travel to the country uh, to Namibia without having a visa. Germans are one of the lucky ones that can like enter the country and stay up to like 90 days. Um, please uh, consult uh, the Namibian embassy to find out whichever is the case for your country or nationality. Number 15, SIM card, data, Wi-Fi, all this kind of stuff. You will be surprised, but the uh, Mobile network um, coverage is actually quite good, like in Namibia, especially in the bigger towns, there's no problem at all. 
Um, it might be a bit difficult in a campsite. Um, what I've experienced is that there is Wi-Fi, but there's actually no Wi-Fi. <laughs> so um, the network can be really, really bad. Um, well, almost like no Wi-Fi. But I mean, come on, you're on holidays, you're in the middle of nowhere in an amazing country. Just sit on a like sit on a on a fire and like watch the stars and just listen to the sounds of the nature. There's no need for being available all day or uh, all time, hey? Number 16, uh, food in Namibia. For me as a meat lover, I felt like I was in heaven in Namibia because of course you have the most delicious game meat um, ever. Like I had, I had one of, no, not one of, like I, ha I actually had the, the most delicious springbok uh, fillet I've ever had in a restaurant in Swakopmund. You find oryx, spring, uh, you know, all the meat just, and it's so yummy. And what is also tradition and what is also common for the people in Namibia to do, same like in South Africa, is a pry. Like it is not just a way of preparing meat, it's also a way of like, you know, people getting together. Um, it's a tradition, it's a culture basically. It's getting to the, together, like um, catching up and just having an amazing time. If you have the opportunity to join one, go for it. So number 17, safety in Namibia. Um, I found Namibia to be safe. Of course, it's like in every country in the world use common sense like don't display your valuables keep an eye on your belongings use safes if there is some also something that i can definitely recommend in the capital in windhoek don't use local cabs let let the people you're staying with uh, the hotel hostel whatsoever you're staying with arrange you a shuttle because it's not too safe and also traveling during the night i wouldn't recommend doing at all otherwise just enjoy your time in namibia Number 18, tap water. Tap water is almost like it's fine to, to, to drink almost everywhere in Namibia. Uh, the only advice I would give you if you stay in a campsite, just double check with the people that run the campsite, but otherwise everything cool. So, and that's it. This is my guide to Namibia. I can just encourage you to travel the country. There's so amazing stuff to do. It was so like, I love the country. It was amazing. Um, so yeah, plan your trip. If you have another question, just uh, feel free to drop me like a comment below and I'm happy to answer that. If you like the video, just please give me, uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please uh, do so. Um, otherwise, I wish you like a cool day and happy travels.